This video shows how the shape, width, and slopes of surfaces can have profound effects on the ability of snakes to move, the speeds that snakes can attain if they're able to move, as well as the type of locomotion that snakes use to move on a variety of surfaces, especially those narrow surfaces that are typically encountered by snakes that live in trees. Snakes are very adept at moving through extremely narrow tunnels, as shown here, even when there are potential obstacles such as pegs down the middle of these chambers. Moving horizontally on bare cylinders is more difficult than within a tunnel because of having to avoid the tendency to topple. Pegs simulating branches on cylinders allow the snakes to go faster and reduce the tendency to topple. Increased cylinder diameter changes the waveforms used by snakes and slightly decreases their speed. Unlike when pegs are present, snakes grip bare cylinders, but this becomes more difficult as the diameter of the cylinder increases. In very wide tunnels, snakes have difficulty bracing themselves by pressing against both walls simultaneously. Except for very narrow tunnels, objects such as pegs allow snakes to move faster than they'd be able to do in smooth, unobstructed tunnels. For equal width uphill surfaces, snakes were usually faster in tunnels than when they were moving on cylinders. And while moving uphill, snakes were able to climb wider tunnels than the diameter of many large cylinders that were impassable. For climbing uphill, projections such as pegs usually enhance the speed of snakes for equal surface widths, regardless of whether it was a tunnel or a cylinder, and these projections also allowed snakes to climb up wider surfaces that were otherwise impassable. On smooth downhill surfaces, snakes often merely slid by letting gravity pull them down. Although pegs appeared to help s the ease of snakes controlling their speed when going downhill, the resulting speeds were often slower than those on smooth downhill surfaces with equal width. When snakes encountered projections, such as pegs, they performed the lateral undulatory mode of locomotion, during which all points along the length of the snake move simultaneously and follow a nearly identical path. Consequently, at a given location along the path traveled by the animal, only as much space is needed as the cross-sectional area of the body. Snakes in unobstructed tunnels perform a type of concertina locomotion during which they periodically start and stop. And, at some points in time, one portion of the body is wedged against the sides of the tunnel while another portion is extended and moved forward. During this type of movement, different points along the body of the snake travel along different paths. Consequently, snakes using this type of locomotion need the entire width of an unobstructed tunnel to move in this manner, rather than just a space equal to the cross-sectional area of their body. Snakes on unobstructed cylinders perform a different type of concertina locomotion than in tunnels. Although the snakes periodically start and stop, and some parts of the snake are moving while other parts are gripping the perch, all points along the body of the snake more or less follow a similar path, and consequently the snake only needs an amount of space equal to the cross-sectional area of its body. When going downhill on steep unobstructed cylinders, some snakes use a unique mode of locomotion that we refer to as sliding, during which the snake lightly grips the perch and maintains a nearly constant body posture, and then gravity just takes over and the snake slides downhill. Unlike arboreal concertina on cylindrical surfaces, Snakes that use this sliding mode of locomotion need the entire space around the cylinder for unimpeded movement.